Well, the beautiful campus of Oregon State University. Final meet of the year for these two in the regular season. Fourth-ranked Utah in town to take on 13th-ranked Oregon State. It's the Pac-12 Gymnastics Meet of the Week presented by Pacific Premier Bank. And a quartet of Oregon State seniors entering Gill Coliseum to perform in front of the home fans for the final time. And they'll do so in front of a packed house, the largest regular season crowd ever here at Gill Coliseum as college gymnastics popularity booming across the country. At stake, the regular season championship. If Utah wins, they're the champions. If Oregon State wins, it'll be a four-way tie between these two, UCLA and Cal. Next week, the Pac-12 championships. Seeding is already set. Oregon State and Utah will both be performing in the nighttime session. And hi, everybody, along with Elisa Mao, I'm Rich Burke. Certainly Jade Carey of Oregon State, Miley O'Keefe of Utah are the established stars of their teams, but it takes a team to be successful. You know, absolutely. It's 24 gymnasts we'll see out there for each team today, and you need each of them to be at their best. Both these teams looking to get that 198 score to really boost their postseason goals. All right, let's talk fifth-year seniors. Crystal Issa of Utah had a very memorable week last week. Yeah, senior day for her in the Huntsman. She's ending on balance beam and goes perfect 10 for the second time in her career. She is so phenomenal on that event. They're the number one ranked beam program in the country. You'll also see her on the bars today. Yeah, that was a big moment for her in her final ever routine at the Huntsman. They're number one on the beam. Oregon State, meanwhile, number three on the beam. Maddie Dagan, one of those beam workers. Such a credit to Maddie Dagan's leadership. Her performance on each event is so dynamic. Strength on vault, beam, and floor where you'll see her today in the five spot setting up Jade Carey with sticks like that. Oregon State looking to beat Utah for the first time in six years. It's the Pac-12 Gymnastics Meet of the Week presented by Pacific Premier Bank. First rotation coming up from Corvallis. Largest previous crowd here at Gill Coliseum, 7,583 back in 1997. They expect to exceed that today in the final meet here at Gill Coliseum this year. Pac-12 championships next week. And the Beavers are on a roll. A couple of weeks ago, they scored 198 for the first time in program history. 198.075. And then last week, 197.55, the second best road score in Oregon State history. So quite a roll. Meanwhile, Utah is without two of their better gymnasts. Tom Farden's team is without Grace McCallum and Kara Aker. McCallum out with a knee injury. Aker out because of concussion protocol. They hope to have Aker back next week for the Pac-12 Championships. An outside chance that Grace McCallum could contribute. Yeah, we saw her. She's on crutches today. Just one crutch, though. Very much improving. Uh, Tom Farden hopes to have her in for the postseason. But uh, sort of uh, tricked us all this week. Posted a video on her Instagram doing a back hamstring layout series on balance beam. That was part of an NIL responsibility that she had to fulfill. It was not a live video. It was uh, from a previous recording. <laughs> okay, so a bit of a trick. At any rate, we hope that Grace can come back next week or later in the postseason season. You can see Oregon State's vault lineup. They have three with a 10-0 start value. The first three, Garcia Lech and Brianna is a 9-9-5 start value. And Caitlin Garcia will start matters off for the home team on vault. Only time you'll see her today. She's gone first or second in the lineup in each meet with a season high of 9.825, which she's accomplished four times, including each of the last two meets. The sophomore from San Diego, Caitlin Garcia. And it's so important with those 995 start values that these first three athletes really hone in on their landings. By the way, I love the Leos. They're just oozing springtime, aren't they? It does feel very much like spring in here. So she will start with that Yurchenko layout full vault. Needs to have a strong entry and big block off the table. To set up that very dynamic vault, just a tiny to the side, otherwise very clean, very confident start for the Beavers on vault. And Utah on bars will start with Emily Morgan, the sophomore from England, Olympic bronze medalist as Team Great Britain took bronze to the Tokyo Games, the first Olympic gymnastics medal for Great Britain since 1928. She did a little 
maneuvering this bar routine, changed her dismount. Very difficult, but hard watch. That full twisting pack salto is a tiny bit crooked upon catch. So here's the new dismount. She did it last year, the blind full into a double tuck. Was hoping that she could get a <laughs> stick like that. She actually approached Tom Farden and said, hey, I think I want to change my dismount. She was doing a toe on, pipe front half, and said, I can stick the double full, the well, double tuck better. He said she said it in her British accent. Might be proper <laughs> for me to do the old dismount so I can have some sticks. <laughs> you can you can try the accent. I'm going to skip it <laughs> and look at that stick. How phenomenal. Tom said he loves them when the gymnasts own their skills. It's a super collaborative process. You'll see a, a re, uh, reworked floor, uh, bar routine from Sage Thompson as well later in the lineup. 9775 for Caitlin Garcia and now Lauren Letch. Six gymnasts go in each rotation. You throw out the bottom score. Letch, a sophomore from Golden, Colorado. That's phenomenal form in the air, typically. A little bit of a bigger hop back there, but nice and dynamic, good height. Take another look here. Good position. I would say her shoulder angle on the vault was a little bit closed. That's a place where the judges can take a deduction. 985 for Emily Morgan. And now McKenna Smith, who will do the all around today. She did the all around the following three weeks after Grace McCallum's injury and then sat out one rotation last week. It's a very clean and precise gymnast. Works very well. The pack salto, the flip down to the low bar done beautifully. Has an extremely challenging dismount, Arabian double front that you'll also see from Miley O'Keefe. She lands forward. Let's see if she can spot and grab the stick. Just a tiny hop forward. Very nice routine from the freshman. Tom Farden talked about, as a freshman, to be an all-arounder on this Utah squad is a real testament to her drive, her dedication. She said it was her goal to make that all-around lineup this year. 9-8 for Lauren Ledge, and now Natalie Briones. Only time you'll see her today in the vault lineup for the past six meets. Another Yurchenko full. Very well done from my angle here. See, her heels came up a little off the ground, but I don't think she moved her feet. We'll see what the judges think about this stick and take another look here. A good shoulder position on the board. Maybe, maybe they did slide just a bit. But uh, that the best of the landings on the three Yurchenko fulls for Oregon State thus far. And now we'll see some uh, other unique, some Tenno start value vaults in their lineup. Natalie Briones, brother Brandon, senior gymnast at Stanford this year, was an alternate for the U.S. at the Tokyo Olympics. Natalie, native of Gilbert, Arizona. 9.85 for McKenna Smith. And now Abby Brenner, the Michigan transfer, was a captain of their national championship team two years ago, the first ever for the Wolverines. Very nice handstand to start, moving quickly into her release combination. Straddle Jaeger, gorgeous overshoot, nice positions on both of those release moves. She will close with a big double layout. Gorgeous, fantastic stick, and really important for these Utah scores to start to rise. To get that 198 mark, you need to average 9-9 on each Routine and a gorgeous landing there. Really great exclamation point on the routine. Now it's been more than three years since Utah scored a 198 on the road. That's the goal today. A 9-8 for Natalie Briones and now Sydney Gonzalez. She has been in every vault lineup. Career high 9-9-2-5 in week four. And a very intricate Yurchenko full-on pike off landed that beautifully. It's very difficult with the full twist before you hit the table to re get repulsion through the pike and then land with your chest up high, which she did a nice job with the timing and just took the smallest hops back. Again, that's worth a 10.0. You don't see those very often. So sometimes the judges judge them a little more, more tightly, I would say, than you see for a Yurchenko full. Love the celebration from Coach Brian Rochella. A 9-9 for Abby Brenner, half a tenth 
off of her career high. And uh, Sage Thompson, 2019 Junior Olympic National Champion on bars, suffered a miss last week, putting up just a 9.325, coming after who two best this year, 9.925 and 9.9. Yeah, those big 9.9s came after. They reworked her routine. That's a new combination for her. And it was on that pirouette last week that she had an issue. None today. You gotta be able to forget, right, Alisa? Absolutely. On to the next one, and for her, it's on to this double layout. Gorgeous! <laughs> and holds on. I like that she gave the judges no room to take a, a, a deduction on that stick, on that double layout. Great for her. She's had a, you know, a few misses throughout the season, which are uncharacteristic for her on bars, but looks to be settling well into this routine. Well done, Sage Thompson. Really, really holding that for three seconds, like the judges would like you to. A 9 0 for Sydney Gonzalez. That's a quarter of a tenth off her career high. And now here is Maddie Dagan. Had a 9 8 5 last week at ASU. Lachenko, one and a half coming up. Gets a nice block and a big jog forward for that 10 0 start value vault. Had a lot of power. You can tell she is amped. It's senior night day. There's so much emotion. And uh, it's important to really harness that. The mental side of gymnastics just as important as the physical side. Yeah, fifth year senior, her final day here performing at Gill. 995 for Sage Thompson. And now Miley O'Keefe, NCAA bars champion two years ago. As a 9.95 this year, which she's done three times. Her double Arabian dismount is my favorite. I love the way the gymnast unwraps herself, seems to hang in the air, and then drops to the ground. And this routine is just exquisite. The extension through her toe point, through her handstands. That pirouette may have been a little bit shy of the required 20 degrees, but on the top of the bar, that first handstand, well done. And here's her Arabian double. And I would say didn't hold that stick long enough uh, to really show the control that you're supposed to. But uh, let's check one more time. The height, exceptional. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the judges do with that. She's been doing that dismount since she was 13 years old. And now a senior from Las Vegas, Miley O'Keefe. 9875 for Maddie Dagan. And now here's our first look at Jade Carey, Olympic gold medalist on floor in Tokyo, doing the all around again today. The reigning world champion on vault. Here's her double full, opens up. Not sure if you call that a stick or not, but love how she does the two twists and then throws the arm up, arms out to the side to stop her rotation and find the landing. Crowd's calling for it. It's an exquisite piece of gymnastics. Difficult and done so well. She said she really loves performing that in college and, and not watering down her difficulty. 9875 for Miley O'Keefe. And now here's our first look at Crystal Issa. Issa, the fifth year senior from Henderson, Nevada. And the first of two times we'll see her today. Also on balance beam. Opens with a huge release move. Array right here. Very well done. A different look from Crystal on bars is the way she hits and gets into these handstands. She does a straight body cast instead of straddling her legs. And then this combination, full pirouette till the double layout and the perfect stick. That was as phenomenal of a routine as I've seen from Crystal Issa this season. Exceptional. Well, Issa wrapping up the bars rotation for the Red Rocks. And rotation one from here in Corvallis in the books. The final regular season meet for each of these two with the Pac-12 championships coming next week. We'll have the first rotation scores for you when we come back to Corvallis. Solid start for both teams in the first rotation. Carey had a 9.925 on vault. That Yurchenko double full is fantastic. Her left foot slid a little bit, didn't pull the heels together, so doesn't go perfect on that vault, but still exceptional. And her teammates love it. And Oregon State ended up with a 49.3. A good start for them. 
Kaylin Garcia with the start, but then everybody else at 9, 8, or above, six gymnasts go. You take the top five scores and add those together, 49-3. And a good beginning for Oregon State. And they trail by a quarter of a point after one rotation. Utah had a pair of 9-9-5s on bars. And that includes Crystal Issa. The fifth-year senior was just phenomenal in this bar routine. It looks a little different from other college athletes because she does those straight body cast handstands, shows how strong she is, great mastery of bars. And then this combination, this pirouette on top of the high bar, which she lands very close to vertical and then goes right into the double layout. Look how close together her feet are on that landing, just exquisite. Yeah, Crystal Issa with one of two 995s for Utah and their bars rotation. The other coming from Sage Thompson. It's a 49.55. That is the fifth time in the last six meets that the Red Rocks have been 49.5 or better on bars. They continue to climb their high 49.6, which came a couple of weeks ago against Cal. And that is where they want to average. They want to be at that 49.5 mark around there on each event to crack that 198. We have one rotation of the books. And Utah is going to head to the vault and Oregon State to the bars. And we come back for rotation two here at Gill Coliseum in front of a sold-out crowd. And it's the Red Rocks and Oregon State. Top 15 battle between these two. And we will be back to Gill Coliseum after this on Pac-12 Network. It goes by so fast that I feel like I'm like a sophomore it, like at heart. And I just like, I experience things and I'm like, oh man, like what would my fifth years do when I was a freshman? My fifth years were the, the kindest, best leaders ever. And same going on throughout my other four years here that I was like, what would they do? And I don't know if they realized how much of an impact they had on me and my leadership role, um, but I just hope I can be that for others. I think since this is my last chance at gymnastics, I think it would be so great to finally get there. I think every year since my freshman year, we've gotten a step closer, whether it was regular season, Pac-12 champion, like regional champion. And I think this year might be that final step towards greatness. And if everything goes to plan, hopefully everything goes to plan. <laughs> And that plan would be for Issa and Utah to win the national championship. They have nine NCAA titles as a team, second only to Georgia's 10. The last, though, was 28 years ago. And, uh, you know, their race for the title is sort of in question right now, knowing those two Olympians are not in the lineups. You know, we talked earlier about expecting to have Kara Aker back. She's so fantastic, ranked in the top three nationally on beam. But Grace McCallum, they're all around her, takes a big hit not having her out there on all four events. Now, after Grace went out, the incredible athletes stepped up in her place. McKenna Smith, Jalen Gilstrap on beam. And, um, you know, we hope, they hope to see her back, perhaps on bars and beam postseason but uh, again this this lineup is deep and they have showed that they can step up in Grace McCallum's absence. And that was her with the uh, knee brace on had a hyper extension of her knee about four weeks ago. Big weekend in college gymnastics and UCLA with a 198-275. That's their high by a tenth this year and Jordan Childs had a 10 on bars. Meanwhile, Haley Bryant of LSU had three tens. Vault, bars, and floor exercise. And uh, she finished with a 39.875, just missing that magical 39.9. And uh, Cal, meanwhile, new program record, 198.1. That's the second time in their history they've gone 198. Back in 2021, they had gone 198.05. That evening session of the Pac-12 championship next week is going to be such an awesome battle to watch. Those top four teams are so close. ASU also making a strong run. Both of these teams, their one loss this season has come to ASU. Yeah, isn't that incredible? And ASU will be in the uh, earlier session. 
Miley O'Keefe, the senior from Las Vegas, had a 9875 on bars, going through her MC, her mental choreography, proud to her vault. Then in the vault lineup, just the past two weeks, carding a 985 and a 99. Her star value, 995. Yeah, Utah adjusted their vault lineup after a warm up. So we'll see Miley O'Keefe. We'll see another 995 vault from Jaylene Gilstrap. Very nice. Your Chenko full. Just a few tiny hops there. Tiny steps. Count. What should be the judges can take one tenth for each of those steps. There's the Oregon State Bars lineup. Carly Beeman is one of four Bars specialists in this lineup. Four gymnasts that you will see only in the Bars lineup. Beeman, a sophomore from Golden, Colorado, in the Bars lineup ten times last year and has led off every meet this year. It's a very young lineup. All sophomores and freshmen have really come on as the season progressed. Caught that Jaeger with bent arms. That will be a deduction. Has a very long line, good extension through her toe point. And this stalter straddle move she does right here, just stunning into her double tuck dismount. Stuck that landing clean. Very nice routine, has a few deductions in there. Did a nice job of regaining momentum after the Jaeger. Yep, exactly. So when you catch closely like that, as she did on that Jaeger, it means she held on the bar a little too long. Sometimes you do that when you're a little bit nervous. 9775 for O'Keefe. They hope to put a red line through that one. And now here is Abby Brenner, fifth year senior from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Transfer from the University of Michigan, had a 9-9. On bars. We'll do this. Yurchenko one and a half, land facing forward. Great block. Beautiful landing. <laughs> she is a, such a spark plug and has been an incredible addition to the team. You know, she competes on three events. She's gone now 34 for 34 this season, but Tom talks about her addition in the locker room. Says she has been such a phenomenal team leader in just her short time. You see her celebrating that very clean vault. We'll see Abby in her floor routine as well. <laughs> she uh, is studying athletic administration in her graduate year at Utah. Tom says if that doesn't pan out, she could be a UN ambassador because she can just rally people around her and bring really brought the team together this season. 9.825 for Carly Beeman. That's a quarter of a tenth off her career high. And now Savannah Miller, the freshman from Waterford, Michigan. We'll see her on bars and later on on floor. It's her third bars routine this year. She'll do this Maloney to pack combination from that angle. You could see she has leg separations on both of those release moves, but the judges may not be able to see it from where they sit on the side. A little shy, a little angle on that handstand, but really winds into this double layout and takes a big hop back. That can be up to three tenths if the judges decide to take that. Really dynamic, but again, these freshmen and the sophomores in this lineup are just really working out the kinks week to week. Abby Brenner with her second 9-9 of the day. And now Jaylene Gilstrap, who was a late addition to this lineup, taking the place of Jillian Hoffman. Here's her Yurchenko layout full. Very clean, nicely done in the air, has a good hollow shape. And you'll also see on beam and floor, she has exceptional artistry and toe point. You can really see it throughout this vault. Good distance on that, but lacks a little bit of the height to drop in for the perfect landing. Miller had a 9-8 in her bars routine. That's uh, half a tenth off her career high. And now fellow freshman Ellie Weaver, the Vancouver, Washington native, just across the Columbia River from Portland. She fell on this Ganger release move last week. Very well caught today. Swings with such ease. Three weeks ago, career high 9-9. Nine, nine. She'll do this giant fall into the double tuck. And 
just a hop back. Gorgeous routine. Good rebound. That has to feel good after the miss last week. And like I mentioned, you can have a tendency to get a little tight, maybe try too hard, but not today for Ellie Weaver. Well done. Nine eight two five for Jaylene Gilstrap, and now McKenna Smith. So her recorded nine eight five on bars had a nine nine on vault last week. Different looking half on front pike off and hop sideways, but that is a really difficult, unique looking vault. Got really good distance. We've seen her open that up for a perfect stick so far this season. Just a pair off today so she does a half turn between the board and the vault and got a little bit off to the side you'll see those two lines on the vault those show the judges if the gymnast is landing straight in the middle they want you dead in the middle of the mat and those are new they're new this season they don't actually incur a specific deduction depending on if you land on them or, or where you go it's, it's more of a guideline right now for the judges the 9925 for ellie weaver is a new career high and now Francesca Caso, another freshman, Santa Monica, California. Been in every bars lineup here in her freshman year. Great toe point. She'll do a difficult Van Leeuwen release move here. The half twist, well caught. She'll also do the stalter. Fortunately, those bent arms will be a deduction. But an excellent stick on that landing. I love how she does the double tuck without her hands. Makes it a little bit more difficult. Shows such great command and air awareness to get the stick. And the stick chainsaw is uh, how the Beavers commemorate stuck landings. Interesting to see if Casso will exceed her career high of 985. You saw the 9825 for McKenna Smith. And now here is Jaden Rucker, reigning NCAA vault champion. Got her first 10 recently. And sticks the landing. Excellent vault. She has such incredible height and power on that vault. And, you know, her feet were a little bit apart when she stuck. But as long as you slide your heels together, the judges don't deduct on that part of it. Now, she did swing the arms. And so technically, when you land, you're supposed to be perfectly still, no movement, show control, so that arm <laughs> swing could be a deduction. Love the smile from Rucker. Yep. NCAA vault champion last year. A 9-9 for Francesca Caso. That is her career best here in her freshman year by half a tenth. And now another freshman, Jennifer McMillan, the Charlotte, North Carolina native. She is the fourth consecutive freshman to go for Oregon State. See her do the Maloney into a bail to handstand. Very clean. Really precise and elegant bar worker. We'll see if she can keep a straight body on her double layout. And nails the landing. Excellent job by these freshmen and underclassmen in this lineup. Yeah, I'll say. McMillan on the heels of the sophomore Beeman and then the freshman Miller, Weaver, and Casso. And then Jennifer McMillan. This is an event that co-head coach Michael Chaplin said they have recruited for. They have worked really, really hard to develop on their weakest event for the last few seasons, he said, since post-COVID. And uh, what a bright future this Oregon State Bar lineup has. Jaden Rucker at 9-9, and now Lucy Stanhope. It was going to be her or, Sta or Sage Thompson in this anchor spot on vault. And it is Lucy. This is her first vault since January 22nd in Oklahoma. She had a heel bruise. Let's see if she does the Yurchenko one and a half or the full. And goes for the one and a half, but on the table, her hand slipped. She didn't get the right uh, entry and repulsion. But um, they put her in that sixth spot very deliberately. They said if the first five in front of her hit well, they were going to let her try that one and a half, get her back in the lineup, get her some experience. 
And how about the 9.95 for Jennifer McMillan? That is her career high by a full tenth. Here is Jade Carey. She does the similar opening series to Emily Morgan, the Maloney, and her full twisting pack. Excellent. Keeping the legs together as she does. Really exceptional. And then does one more between the bars. She does a, a giant full twisting double back. Let's see if she can get the stick. And she Indeed. does. Wow. With uh, the way these judges have been scoring these routines, that one should be, uh, you know, at least a 9.95 with the way these, these have been thus far. She had a 10 a couple of weeks ago on bars. One of a pair of 10 she has on bars in her career. And she has an Oregon State record 10 perfect 10s in her season plus college career. Coming up on two full years now. Five on floor, two on bars, two on vault, and one on beam. You see, you hear the Gil Coliseum crowd booing. So not the 10 today on bars. She's got two more opportunities. And believe it's a 9.95 for Jade Carey on bars. Two rotations in the book. Beam and floor coming up from Corvallis. Two rotations in the books, and Oregon State with a slim lead on Utah of .075. Oregon State with a 49.55 on bars, matching that from the first rotation for the Red Rocks, 49.55. Their best bars rotation this year. We're joined by assistant coach Michael Chaplin. Michael, uh, such a great bars rotation with such a young crew. How excited are you as to how they're coming along? Uh, it's great. We, we have been waiting for this. We knew they were a really good uh, group of bar swingers. We just hadn't put a whole rotation together like that. And to do it here on senior night with our, our fans, it's uh, a great time to really put it all together. Got three season highs and your overall team season high. How did you uh, take that momentum into balance beam? <clears throat> the good thing about beam is it's been our strongest event all year. So it's just more of just do what we normally do on beam. Just be calm. Uh, do what we do, uh, meet in and meet out, and we'll be in great shape there. And then just uh, hopefully be able to carry all of that emotion and excitement on the floor and finish strong. Okay, Michael, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the meet, and good luck next week. Thank you. Go all right, Michael Chaplin, associate head coach for the Oregon State Beavers. And how about Jennifer McMillan, new career high by a tenth on bars 995. From this angle, we'll really be able to look at her form on these between bar release moves. She keeps the legs together, the toes pointed, and then this double layout dismount. She's had some body errors, but not today. Nicely done, nicely landed. And that bar lineup, just incredible how they have developed throughout the season. Yeah, if you can put, a, uh, put the 9-8 in gray, you're doing pretty well. Again, six gymnasts in a rotation. You take the top five scores and add them together. 49-5-5 for Oregon State. And that is their best score on bars this year. And it equaled the bars score from the Red Rocks in the first rotation. And so now Oregon State with a .75 lead over Utah as they are looking to beat the Red Rocks for the first time in six seasons. Third rotation coming up. Utah will go to the floor. Oregon State to the beam. How about Abby Brenner of Utah? Had a 9-9 on bars and follows it up with a 9-9 on vault. Very dynamic. Yurchenko, one and a half. Well landed. She's so excited. Celebrating with her teammates. Gets that near stick. Jaden Rucker then followed her in the lineup. Did a stick of her own on her one and a half. Yeah, so they had to count Miley O'Keefe's 9775, which led it off because Lucy Stanhope sat down on her vault as she tried the one and a half, having had five hits before her. So a 49-225 for Utah, which again puts Oregon State up for two rotations by .075. And one of their lower vault totals of the season. They move over to floor where they have been really improving in the last couple meets. So they got a lot of work to do on floor and beam if they're going to hit 198 on the road for the first time in three years. Yeah, they were 
glad to have Lucy Stanhope healthy enough to be back in the lineup. You know, that ball didn't go the way she wanted it to, but it shows that she's recovered from the heel bruise that kept her out uh, since January 22nd. She last competed against at Oklahoma. Jade Carey will anchor the beam rotation for Oregon State. She anchors every lineup. Olympic gold medalist in Tokyo, and she is just a sophomore. And she's the 13th gymnast in NCAA history to complete the gym slam, a 10 in her career on each event, including five times on floor. And she at last capped it in front of friends and family at home last week down at Arizona State with a 10 on beam. And she was really working hard and really wanted that 10. She has done three different beam routines this season. Started off doing the same composition as last year. Talked to some judges who said they were taking deductions on one of her leaps. So decided to change that leap series. Second iteration, there was a jump that she was getting deducted on. So they changed that. So today you'll see version three that got her the 10 last week. And yet if there's a connection that she misses early on in that, she'll go back on the fly to a previous version. Yep, so calling the audible based on the the leap in advance, the split jump, or excuse me, the straddle jump out of the front aerial. I'll call that out before we can see it happening live. It's, it's you know such a mental game, especially on the balance beam. They have done these routines over and over and over again, but doing them in front of a packed house and for Christina Peterson on senior night, her last time at Guild College. Yep, this is it. The beam specialist has let off every beam lineup this year. Career high 9875 three weeks ago. Last week posted at 9775. The final beam routine of her career at Gill Coliseum. Oregon State really shows flexibility throughout the routines. Takes a moment like that to show the mix of artistry and athleticism. She will very quickly get things rolling here with a triple series going all the way down the beam. Very well landed. We talk a lot about Utah's beam team. They're ranked number one, but Oregon State ranked number three. Yeah, it's Utah number one, Oklahoma number two, Oregon State number three. Beavers have been 49.625 or better the last three weeks. Just the third program in NCAA history to do that three straight weeks. How good is that? I mean, these seniors, they've got three of them in the lineup. Such a foil to their young bar team. This is a veteran, experienced senior team. She's going to really quickly dismount here to a phenomenal, phenomenal routine. Just closing your career like that. That's exactly the moment you want these athletes to have. What a way to cap it for Christina Peterson. And I think some tears flowing there. I ran into her at Dutch Bros across the street a few weeks back, and I said, what makes a good beam routine? And she says, those who do it well, love it. Yeah, Coach Michael Chaplin this week called her just the very special leadoff. She's so special, <laughs> meaningful to this team. Now, Abby Brenner, the fifth-year senior, a senior in her lone year at Utah after the transfer from University of Michigan, has been in the last six floor lineups, beginning with three straight 9.875, then a 9.9, and then consecutive 9.925s the past two weeks. Very high-energy routine. Starts with a big double pike. Michigan's national championship team a couple of years ago, and now with Utah flashing the U. Closing with a double tuck, and we will rock you. And she does, rocks that landing.
Abby Brenner leading it off for the Red Rocks, the fifth year senior. What a lead off and what an impact Abby Brenner has had on this team. She chose Utah because she wanted to get uh, more experience in a really high profile setting with another team that could compete for the national title, but not in her conference. She did not want to compete against her Michigan teammates. Christina Peterson matched her career high in her final ever beam routine at home, 9875. And now Jenna Domingo, a beam specialist, has gone second in the beam lineup each meet this year. Same six gymnasts, every beam lineup this year in the same order. And that front aerial with the slight wobble, she'll have to repeat because it's part of her flight series. So you'll see it again. Should connect it to a back pike. Well done, good correction there. like how she walks into the splits there. Great display of her flexibility and control. It's very difficult to do those splits in a straight line like that. Yeah, it makes it look easy. She'll connect three leaps here for her leap series. Senior as well, this is her final beam performance. And does a good job correcting in the middle of that. You could see her arms got out of line, but she didn't panic, kept her shoulders square. And the tiniest hop. So a great job for Jenna DeBigo, but not her best. We've seen her be near perfect. Still, to fight through those few errors and keep her composure, just the sign of a, a veteran beam worker. Yeah, that was her final routine here at Gill Coliseum. 9875 for Abby Brenner. Wrapping up a solid day for her after a couple of 9 nines. And now here is Jalen Gilstrap. Been in every floor lineup this year. Career high tying 9925 each of the past two weeks. This is the fur Elise jam by the piano guys. Listen to the music change when she completes her first tumbling pass. It's a fun routine. Excellent height on that Rudy. her back tumbling pass. It's a requirement and she'll move into her final front tumbling pass here. Very clean. Jalen Gilstrap, Jr. from McKinney, Texas. She chose that Beethoven music, and Carly Dockendorf choreographed that one. All others done by volunteer assistant Maya Hambrick, but Carly and her had a great groove together choreographing these floor routines. It's such a beautiful contrast from Abby Brenner's rock and roll to that gorgeous classical representation. Yeah, from love Jaylen it. Gilstrap. 9825 for Domingo, and now Lauren Letch had a 9 8 on vault. Responded to a fall three weeks ago in the Beavers' last home meet with a nuclear high 9925 two weeks ago at Stanford. Then a 99 last week at ASU. Here's a similar combination we saw from Jenna Domingo. Has to go front to back, and that will likely not get the combination. You have to move consistently without wobbling between the two, so it could cost her two tenths of a point, depending on how tightly the judges are uh, looking at things today. Really excellent extension. That ring jump, you have to show closure between your foot. It needs to be at the height of your head. 
Her routine is super fast. She goes right to the end here and will dismount this new for her this season. On one foot, front gainer full and holds on for the stick. So a clean routine, but that waiver between this flight series could cost her this special requirement. It, it, it should be two tenths in my estimation because it broke the series. And so that means her score will start from a 9-8 and then the deductions on top of that will be subtracted. 9-9 nine, nine for Gilstrap, quarter of a tenth away from her career high. And now Abby Paulson, the senior from Anoka, Minnesota. First of two times we'll see her today, also on beam. She'll open with a front to two and a half twist. Try to keep her legs together and not cross them when she twists. Let's see how this goes. Super difficult combination. Pretty well done on the leg form. Another bounding pass, well landed. Three tumbling pass routine for Paulson. Some gymnasts this year electing to go with a two pass routine, more than in years past. She'll close one and a half to front layout. Very well done. This has gotten cleaner and cleaner as the season has progressed. Awesome job for Abby Paulson, one of the three seniors that announced last week they'll be coming back for their fifth year, along with Jaden Rucker and Miley O'Keefe. Yeah, so Jaden, Abby, and Miley, and Tom Farden says you can refer to them collectively as Jam. <laughs> 9875 for Lauren Letch. Sydney. And now Sydney Gonzalez. Oregon State leading this through two rotations by .075. She will also do the front aerial, the back tuck combination. Very smooth combo, well landed. Her scores over the past three weeks, 9925, 995, and last week, new career high 9975, which features a 10 from one judge. Now with the way these judges are scoring today, if she keeps it up, wouldn't be surprised to see that 10 thrown again. Very nice side aerial. She had to adjust her routine mid-season. So that's it. a different way that she combines that side aerial and also that leap series. Very well done. Same dismount as Lauren Letch, stands on one foot, swings the leg through, full twist. Uh, didn't quite show the control there for the 10, but that was, I would say, the cleanest routine, most consistent we've seen so far from the Beavers. So, fourth straight strong routine for Sydney Gonzalez. Abby Paulson, a 9 9 on floor. That's a quarter of a tenth away from her career high, and now McKenna Smith. 985 on bars, 9825 on vault. They rested her on floor last week. Starts with an E tumbling pass up front with two twists. Not a lot of gymnasts open up and have the height like she does on her front tumbling. Front tumbling pass. Rudy to lay out, step out.
she'll close with two and a half twists. Again, want to see those legs glued together in a controlled landing. Oh, new clothes for her. Just the Rudy. Very well landed, very clean. Rare for the freshman to do the all-around at Utah. Only four in Tom Farden's eight years as head coach. Michaela Skinner, Grace McCallum, Miley O'Keefe, and McKenna Smith. 9-9 nine, nine for Sydney Gonzalez. Her fourth consecutive beam score of 9-9 nine, nine or better. And now here is Maddie Dagan at a 9-8-7-5 on vault. The third senior in this lineup. We'll also see her on floor. She has been so consistent on beam in her Beaver career. Flip-flop layout series here. Flawless. Final beam routine in front of the home fans, a packed house. You can see them up to the rafters here at Gill, largest regular season crowd in history. The sleep series would be the only other place that can give her trouble. And just the slightest of arm waivers there. Does well to correct the slight shoulder error she had. She'll go down the beam for her dismount. Round off one and a half and nails it. What awesome. a great final beam routine here at Gill Coliseum for Maddie Dagan. Her sister Lacey graduated a couple of years ago, now back as an assistant coach. It was an OSU gymnast for three seasons. Here's that one and a half dismount. Does so well to hold on to the landing. And there's her sister Lacey celebrating. Just an incredible pair of gymnasts for the Beavers, yeah, Lacey and Maddie Dagan. Strong vaulter, good beam worker when she was healthy. 9875 for McKenna Smith. And now here is Jaden Rucker. Had a 9 9 on vault. Pac 12 co champ on floor a couple of years ago. Brings personality to her floor routine. Carter, the career high 995 last week. We'll start with a massive full in, half in, half out. Super challenging. And lands a little bit low. That step forward will be a deduction. How much? With these judges, it's hard to tell. Could be up to two tenths. Jaden Rucker's father, Robert, Pac-12 athlete and All-American at track at Arizona State, 1991. Be her second and final tumbling pass. Connection of front flips, front layout, front layout full. Nicely landed. Love the flair Jaden Rucker brings to a floor routine. Yeah, really nicely done. Just that step forward on her first pass. 9925 for Maddie Dagan in her final beam routine. That's a quarter of a tenth off her career high. And now Jade Carey. 9925 on vault, 995 on bars. Had a 10 on beam last week at ASU to complete the career gym slam. Sometimes that full turn gives her a bit of trouble, but not today. Here she should connect a front aerial to a straddle jump and doesn't. So we'll see her do a different leap series after this flight series. Love the control she shows on that going up in releve at the end. So here she'll do a switch leap into a switch half. A little more difficult. 
very nicely done. And that equals the connection she missed before, correct? Exactly. Gives her the bonus points that she needs to start from a 10. And a special requirement. You have to connect two elements like that. She's off. Gainer full stop. Excellent job. Would say not perfect with the small waiver on that front aerial. But just shows her exceptional mental toughness to be able to call the audible in the middle of the routine like that. Number two beam worker in the country this year, trailing only Utah's Miley O'Keefe, who is getting set for her floor routine. We'll see Miley on beam in the next rotation after the 9-7 by Jaden Rucker. Here is O'Keefe anchoring the floor rotation for Utah. And that will be the score that Utah wants to drop. Here is the NCAA floor champion two years ago, ranked number one in the country this year. for her precision and the difficulty of her dancing. Opens with a big double pike. Very well done. supportive crowd here at Oregon Stadium for the opponents, but the cheering was not as much for O'Keefe as that Jade got a 9-9-7-5 on beam, which means a 10 from one judge. One tumbling pass left for Miley. She was the 2021 Gymnast of the Year, 2022 Pac-12 Specialist of the Year means so much to this program that she's coming back for a fifth year. Very clean final pass will certainly erase the 9-7 from Jaden Rucker. Molly O'Keefe, the senior from Las Vegas. Tom Farden started recruiting her when she was 11 years old. Went to Vegas, introduced himself to her coaches. She was remarkable then and remarkable now. And now Ariana Young, a junior for Oregon State, this is an exhibition routine. Junior from San Mateo, California. Hasn't competed on beam this year, but this is the sixth time that she's exhibition. Had a 9-9 on beam last year at the NCAA Regional. And an exhibition routine means it will not count in their six scores, but it's a great opportunity for these gymnasts to get experience competing in front of a big crowd as a junior. Ari has done it quite a bit and the releve, the toe point that she works on on beam is just exquisite. We'll see her in the floor lineup in the next rotation. Arkansas State clearly has incredible depth on this event with Ari as an exhibition performer. Isn't that the truth? We have two of the three best beam teams in the country here today. Wow, that was probably one of the best beam routines of the day, actually. <laughs> her teammates are overcome, celebrating. Sometimes, Christina Peterson. <laughs> yeah, gymnasts are not always the most coordinated off the event sometimes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got three rotations in the books. Ariana Young, great exhibition routine. Back in a moment to Corvallis. Abby Paulson of Utah on floor, Cardigan 9-9. She starts with this difficult combination past the front, through to a two and a half twist, very well landed. A lot of twisting in this routine, start to finish. This senior who announced she's one of the jam crew, right? She's coming back for her fifth year. Tom Farden said she's spent so much to this program and their success today. So 49.475 on floor for Utah. They came in with uh, 49.465 in QS. And uh, the, the 49.475 is two-tenths off their high this year, a couple of weeks ago. 
at Cal, or at home against Cal. And then for Oregon State, Maddie Dagan, her beam routine, the final beam routine of, routine of her career at Gill in 9925. And to maintain your mental composure on beam with all the emotions of senior day and do it that well, just a phenomenal job my Maddie Dagan. You see her warming up on floor. She'll do a little rock and roll for us. But a 9-9-2-5, the three 9-9s at the end of that lineup, 49-5-5. Shows you why they're third in the nation there. Yeah, 49-5-5, one-tenth off their high a couple of weeks ago at Stanford. You saw the 9-9-7-5 for Jade Carey. Two judges, and they give their values in half a tenth. So 9-9-7-5 means one judge had a 10, and the other a 9-9-5 for Jade Carey. There she is. She will anchor. The Beavers floor lineup as well. Oregon State with a .15 lead. They need a 49-6 on floor for the second 198 in school history and the first ever at home. I think um, at the beginning of the season, we just said that we wanted to do better and better each week. And I really couldn't be more proud because that's pretty much exactly what we've done. Um, and I and I always say too, like we don't want to be perfect mid-season. We don't want to peak then. Um, we just want to have that steady incline so that by the end of season we're at our at our best. And I think um, we're we're really fired up for this weekend and super excited for the rest of the season and um, just super excited. Yeah. No, I'm just really grateful for the journey that I've had here and just them giving me the opportunity to come back for the fifth year. It feels just kind of like. I don't know, just that that extra lap of just so much fun. And, and I I probably will be crying my eyes out at the end of this meet. Hopefully I can make it through the meet without getting too emotional. Um, but yeah, I just I just look up in the in the stands and I just realize like all the little girls that I've hopefully touched and inspired. And um, I'm just really, really glad. And I don't want it to end. Um, but yeah. <laughs> That's Matty Dagan of Oregon State. It, it, it doesn't happen with either of these two programs, but so often college gymnasts leave the sport not liking it anymore. Years ago, Michael Chaplin, associate head coach for Oregon State, a senior after her final floor routine, told him, Coach, with tears in her eyes, I am so much going to miss this. And he says that's his goal for every gymnast when they get out of here, that they're going to miss it. And Matty Dagan put it so well. This is... It means so much to her. She means so much to their team. She has been such an important leader for them throughout her career. And, you know, Jade Carey talked about how important and how meaningful this team has been to her as she looks at her elite career. It has rekindled her love for the sport, and she wants to take the love and the camaraderie and the team environment that Maddie Dagan has helped create to her as she continues her elite career. Emily Morgan will begin things on beam for Utah. The sophomore from England had a 9.85 on bars. Has been in every beam lineup this year. She gets some final counsel from Carly Dockendorf, former UW gymnast. Emily 8 for 9 on beam this year. Season high 9.925 coming a couple of weeks ago. Love the way she gracefully mounts the beam. Watch this. She'll do a front punch front walkover onto the end. It, it counts as her front element. Well done. She led off for Team GB at the Olympics 2020 in Tokyo. It's her triple series. Well done. A slightly bit under rotated, but you could not see with the way she corrected. A little bit of a bounce back, just a 9775 last week. She loves being in the leadoff position. Feels like she can set the tone for her teammates. Olympic bronze medalist, Emily Morgan. Goes off the side for her front fall. Nice stick, just the slight bobble with her shoulders. Very clean. Utah number one beam team in the country. NQS of 49-6-7. And now Savannah Miller. Lead off Oregon State on floor. 
Oregon State needs a 49-6 for the second 198 in program history and the first ever at home. They had a 49-6-7-5 a couple of weeks ago at Stanford. Some big tumbling, just double pike. Moves that front foot around just a little bit. Savannah Miller, Waterford, Michigan native. So much depth on floor, competed 10 athletes this year. And for the freshman to rise to the top of that, be your leadoff, shows how consistent she's been. Close with a double tuck. Yeah, four nine nines here in her freshman year. That's her high, and that was a good one. And she must know, if OSU beats Utah today, that gets them the share of the Pac-12 regular season title. If Utah, if Utah wins, they're the outright champions. If Oregon State wins, and they have a slim lead entering this rotation, there's a four-way tie. These two schools, Cal and UCLA. 9825 for Emily Morgan. And now McKenna Smith. Didn't enter the beam lineup until Grace McCallum was injured. So this is her fifth beam routine. There are nine nine two fives. Watch her, she will moonwalk as she flashes the U. Good leap series. Slight arm check between the two. I think here comes the moonwalk. Here comes that. Acro series, she moonwalks a little bit later. A little later, okay. Correction there between the front aerial and the split jump, but good composure. She'll do her layout series. Very well done. Carly Dockendorf choreographs these routines in addition to being the beam coach and wants them to have fun with it like she does with the moonwalk there into the U. Right before her gainer full dismount off the side. Perfectly stuck. Nicely done. It was a solid meet for the freshman McKenna Smith. She told Tom Farden, hey, I'm going to do the all around for you this year. Said that back in September. And here she is, doing it in the wake of Grace McCallum's injury. 9875 for Savannah Miller. And here's Ariana Young. She had a 995, by the way, in her exhibition routine on beam. Has been in seven of ten floor lineups this year. She's out last week with an illness, but obviously from that beam routine, she seems to be feeling better. She'll start with the double pike. Excellent landing. Showed really good control. Very graceful gymnast. Little hop out of that leap. Should be a deduction. Minor one. Front pass here to 
finish. Front layout to front full. Bound out. Maybe a slight landing deduction there. Ariana Young, junior from San Mateo, California. Nine eight seven five for McKenna Smith, giving her thirty nine four two five in the all around. And now Abby Paulson, a senior from Anoka, Minnesota, top rope beam champion each of the last two years. One of the three members of this beam lineup that have scored a ten in their career. Three years ago, the first. 10 on beam for the Red Rocks in 12 years. Fantastic connection there, that side aerial to lay out. Very challenging. And they've got some making up to do. Down by a couple tenths to Oregon State. First two without their you know, most perfect routines. So far, Abby knows what she needs to do. Understands the assignment, throws up the 22. Utah trailed by .015 coming into this rotation. And if you're new to gymnastics, a quarter point is about like a field goal in football. So it's close. Yep, and that was a great dismount. A really, really solid routine. It's She packs a lot into that routine. A bit of a college stick at the end, but Again, with these judges, hard to know what they're going to do with that today. 985 for Ariana Young, and now here's Lauren Letch at a 98 on vault, 9875 on beam. Has been in all but two floor lineups this year. Her consistency has been a pleasant surprise. Prior to last year, she hadn't competed in three years because of shoulder and ankle injuries. Former elite gymnast, beautiful to watch, Lauren Letch. She actually committed to Utah before getting injured and switching to Oregon State. Well-landed, difficult pass combination. Given her a bit of trouble earlier in the season, not today. Known for her excellent flexibility, you'll see in this lead pass. Goes a, a little bit short between the two, didn't bound quite as much. So you normally see in that epic backspin, no credit for that, but one of my favorites. Closes with a double tuck. Big round of applause from the sold-out house for Lauren Letch of Oregon State. Sophomore from Golden, Colorado. The great tumbling passes, but an uncharacteristic sort of error between her uh, on her leap pass. Didn't break form, but didn't really get the repulsion that you need to in those leaps. 9-9-2-5 for Abby Paulson. By the way, through two gymnasts each in this rotation, Oregon State had increased their lead by a quarter of a tenth to 0.175. Crystal Issa, last week the fifth-year senior, said goodbye to the Huntsman Center in fitting fashion with the second 10 on beam in her career. This triple series back cancer two layouts. Phenomenal. So beautiful and just excellent. Slight balance check there, so won't be getting the 10 today. Love her personality on beam. You might get a wink maybe when she flashes the U. She pretends to paint her nails there as she walked on the beam. Ho oh, hum. <laughs> Here's the U. When she's at home, she pretends to take a picture of the crowd, goes right into her dismount, stuck. Great job. Not perfect, but really, really well done for Crystal Issa.
9875 for Lauren Letch. And now Sydney Gonzalez. The lead for Oregon State is 0.125. The last time Oregon State beat Utah was here six years ago. And it came down to the final routine. Oregon State's Katie Ann McMillan needed a 9925 on her final floor routine and got it in Oregon State 1. It could be coming down to Jade Carey. Front tumbling from Sydney to start. Sister Lexi also competed at Oregon State. Her club coach, Whitney Watson, former Beaver gymnast, primarily a vaulter, 2007 to 2010. Tumbling pass will be a double pike. That step forward should be a deduction. You're allowed to step backwards, but the chest was down just a little bit. Sydney Gonzalez, junior from Newport Beach, California. Already a pair of nine nines today on vault and beam. The junior has really, really improved on these power events, vault and floor. You've watched her tumbling just get cleaner and cleaner. Well done today. Crystal Issa follows up her 10 at the Huntsman last week with a 9925. Now here is Miley O'Keefe. 9875 on bars, 9775 on vault, 9925 on floor. NCAA floor champion two years ago. And wow, that is so uncharacteristic. Falls on a dance element. Miley scored 310 so far this year. Yeah, all in the past five weeks. She's Utah's, she has the most tens of any performer in Utah history. That was just really uncharacteristic. Yeah, seven tens on beam in her career, including three in the past five meets. I have no doubt the rest of this is going to be perfect. She's such a tough competitor. I'm sure she's just so annoyed at that. Uh, just really stunning. Is there any sense of, okay, you know it's possible, get it out of the way now? You know, at this point, she knows that, that I mean, just so uncharacteristic for Miley O'Keefe, they've probably lost the meet at this point. So she mounts, it's just a simple mount. She gets no credit for this. It's just a beautiful display. And, you know, the just so strange. I think maybe got a little bit ahead of herself, but you could tell the the person supporting her pulled the pulled the board away because she never expected her to fall, and nor did Miley. Really tough break for her. Getting some consolation from Carly Dockendorf. 9875 for Sydney Gonzalez. Now here is Maddie Dagan. 9875 on fall, 9925 on beam. This is the final routine she'll ever perform in front of the home crowd. The Graduate senior from Pleasanton, California. Her sister there is in the corner, cheering her on. Well landed. These fans love Maddie. She's been a regular in the floor lineup since her freshman year four years ago. Sister Lacey there. 
pumping her up before this double pike. Former Oregon State gymnast, now an assistant. Flawless landing. Awesome job. What a way to finish her Oregon State home career, Maddie Dagan. See, she's overcome with emotion, as is the team. Really, really great job by a phenomenal senior in Maddie Dagan. Nine four two five, a rare miss for Miley O'Keefe. And now here is Jaylene Gilstrap. And this is just the third beam performance in Jaylene Gilstrap's career at Utah. Competed on beam last week for the first time this year. Only other competitive beam routine came two years ago. At a nine eight five last week. Let's see, she's a little bit nervous tentative on that wolf turn. Do a cat leap into a front aerial here. Great extension. Looks like she gained a little confidence there. It's her flight series. That can spring back pike to two feet. Nicely done. connection. She'll turn around here and dismount that handspring into a one and a half twist. Nicely landed, just a slight bobble on the top. Really pressure-packed situation for Jalen Girlstrap, and she delivers for the Utes when they needed her. Yes, she did. Following the rare fall for Miley O'Keefe, Maddie Dagan a 9.95, and now here is Jade Carey. Jade Carey. Carey has not made her decision on whether or not she'll compete in college gymnastics next year. Has her eyes on Paris in 2024 in the Olympics, running with the gold in Tokyo and did so on floor. Said this double-double she'll open with is one of her favorite skills to compete. The most challenging pass being done in college gymnastics today, very well landed. Good height on her jumps. Flex shows off her strength before she does this final pass. Combination front layout to a double pike. Perfectly landed. Just phenomenal. This place is erupting. Yes, they are. They're on their feet at Gil Coliseum. Jade Carey wrapping up Oregon State's first victory over Utah in six years. They're calling for the 10. It was a fantastic routine to end it. And their first victory in six years helps them clinch their second straight tie for the regular season title. The a four-way tie between Oregon State, Utah, Cal, and UCLA for the regular season championship in the Pac-12. She loves this program so much. Whether she'll return next season in the NCAA or not, she will be training for Paris in Corvallis. We've got a 995 on one side, the 10 on the other, so she'll go 9975.
much to the chagrin of this crowd. But what a day for the Beavers. What a day for Jade Carey. 9925 on vault, 995 on bars, and then a pair of 9975s beam and floor. And uh, tell you what, how do you follow that? How about an exhibition for Caitlin Garcia? Sarah Garcia Crump. was in the vault lineup at a 9775, sophomore from San Diego. Sarah Crump also on beam right now, exhibition for Utah. trained at the same YMCA in San Diego from age four until coming to Corvallis. She'll open with a double tuck. Very high. with that one and a half to front layout. Well landed. Kaylin Garcia. And her teammates rush upon her after her exhibition routine on floor. Oregon State finishes with a 197.95. These two teams, every team in college gymnastics, fights for every tenth. Oregon State just a half a tenth away from the second 198 in school history. And they beat Utah for the first time in six years. They knock off the Red Rocks by a quarter of a point. And our Pac-12 Gymnastics Meet of the Week presented by Pacific Premier Bank in Oregon State with the second highest score in school history, 197.95. They missed by half a tenth of hitting 198 for the second time ever. They'd done that a couple of weeks ago at Stanford, and they knock off Utah, the number four team in the land, by a quarter of a point. First win over the Red Rocks in six years. And Maddie Dagan, fifth-year senior, and she is fourth from the right right there. She had a great final meet. Yeah, I mean, the Beavers understood the assignment, and they delivered. She ties her career high with a 9.95 to close out this meet. They needed to win. Her sister cheering her on in the corner there closes with this phenomenal double pike. The crowd goes wild. The Beaver fans out in full force tonight. And what a show they put on. There's Lacey embracing her sister. What a day. And what an exciting day of Pac-12 gymnastics that leads into the championships next week. That uh, evening session is going to be a gauntlet. Yes, it is. Four schools and a four-way tie for the Pac-12 regular season championship will all perform in that second session next week. And there is the championship trophy. The Beavers will get a photo along with the Red Rocks. These two schools, along with Cal and UCLA, four-way tie for the Pac-12 regular season championship. And the Pac-12 championships are next week at the Maverick Center, West Valley City, Utah. And go to pac-12.com backslash tickets if you'd like to go. And if you can't go, make sure to watch it here on Pac-12 Network. That is going to be something. I mean, Arizona State, which has been superb the past few weeks, they'll be in the earlier session. It just shows the depth of this conference. Top to bottom, phenomenal gymnastics. And everyone seems to be peaking just at the right time. Such a great day for these Beavers. And for the Utes, I have no doubt this is going to stick with them and inspire inspire them to come out so strong. Bit of angry gymnastics, I think, next week. We'll see from them. Yeah, and they hope to get Grace McCallum and Kara Aker back. Yeah, this team has so much potential, and while I'm sure I know they hate to lose, this could be just what they need to propel them to the national championship that's eluded them for a few decades. Yeah, been 28 years since Utah won the last their last national championship. They have nine in their history. Oregon State 
gunning for the NCAA championships as well. Final day of coverage in the regular season for Pac-12 Gymnastics Championships next week. It has been a great year of coverage. Our senior coordinating producer is Will O'Toole. For producer Alan Brum, director Tim Lay, for Elisa Mao and our entire crew, I'm Rich Burke. That's it from Corvallis, the Beavers, with the second highest score in school history, knock off Utah by a quarter of a point.